the live. Hello. <laughs> hey, live, love that. How is How are you doing today? I am well. It is Friday. Friday is always a good day. Uh, Dalton, how's foot jumps going? <laughs> uh, okay. Six out of twelve wins so far. Half a win. Takes... Just... Half a wins. Yeah, fifty percent win ratio. That's not bad. Not, not bad. bad. Uh. I might, might take today, tomorrow off, and then absolutely sweat it out on Sunday. 18 uh, games on Sunday. Oof. Yeah. I'll just wake up at like 10 in the morning, just non-stop. Like you know what's just happened? I've just gone onto Aaron's stream, and I've got an advert. <gasps> How ridiculous is this? How ridiculous. <sighs> that is terrible. Absolutely Believe terrible. It. Terrible behaviour from you, Benjamin. <laughs> Why is my phone loud? Let's get the chat up just ready to answer some questions. But yes, uh, today, as you can see by the title, we're going to talk a little bit about lockdown. Uh, we thought we'd get it out of the way with whilst it's still fresh. Whilst it's still relevant. Whilst it's still relevant. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that didn't aren't in the UK, we got told last week was the news announced. That we're finally going to be able to go back to the pubs. Finally. <laughs> Except I'll be working. Yeah, well, you, so you'll it's be... kind of working in reverse over here. It's horrible. Two days ago, we got told that uh, we're going back into like a proper lockdown. Everything's closing. All the transport shutting. Which... Bit of a mistake coming back. But you have your Xbox now. And that's what really matters. Yes, it's true. Very true. Uh, so, I'll quickly get up the, the the timers for us UK people as to when we can do things. Because I've been sent it like six times, because my friends are definitely not all alcoholics. <laughs> That's what you've been counting down to, isn't it? <laughs> no, so I think I sent it to the group chat as well. But there's... Is it in this one? Which group chat are you in? Yes, so I'll show stream as well. Oh, the countdown, yeah. Yeah, so it's a little countdown app which shows you, like, all the days, all the seconds. Hey, Dalton with the subs tier one subscriptions for three third month. And hello, Ellie. Okay. How are you? And hello, Talia. How was the rest of your stream, Talia? Was it good? But yes, it's two days, three hours, 54 minutes, and four seconds until we're allowed to have a beer in the park with one friend legally. With one friend. <laughs> legally, though. Le Legal legally. <laughs> uh, we then got 23 days until we can have beer in the park with five friends. Uh, 37 days until we can be in a beer garden with five friends. Uh, 72 days until we can have a beer in a pub with five friends. And then the almighty 107 days. Beer everywhere with everyone. And everyone must be excited by that. Also, talking about exciting, people have noticed Ben has a webcam. Hello. Say hello to his sexy face. Ooh, other side. Sexy face. Ooh. Oh, God. I have to keep looking away because it's turning me on. Well, you see. Aaron used the face cam and I was like, well, that's easy. Like, just put your face on stream. Everyone knows who you are. And now I'm here and I have the camera looking at me and I'm looking back at you guys and it's like, holy shit. Yeah. I have a camera on my face. So what's weird for me is I can see my face three separate times because of like all the screens I have it up on. I can also see Ben's face now three times. It's just a bit weird. It's lovely. <laughs> it's like each it's, one of them is like a second a after computer. each other as well. Yeah, so um, I I can appreciate you guys now. Yeah. Having your face on stream. It's, uh, it's quite nerve-wracking to get used to. Ah, oh, but it's fine, you know, like... You get used to it. Speed used my, to it, my face is on stream, just very, very small in that picture. <laughs> if you can just about make it out, so it's yeah. Fine. I could zoom in, but that's effort. <laughs> <laughs> I could replace you with like a togepi or something if you wanted. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, cool. So <laughs> we're talking about everything lockdown today. Yeah. Um, main mainly because. Well, I mean, it's just very yeah, topical, it's it? very topical. Everything that's going on right now, and we we also it's realized kind of us all. so it affected us all. We realized we all had slightly different 
like happenstances with it. Mm. Is that the right word? That's definitely not the right word, is it? I mean, we've all just been put into different situations, really, because of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. So, um, I think we could we could probably start with how it's affected work, and particularly Dalton, as uh, being the working man that you are. Oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, not the moment, but <laughs> normally. Ex, ex working man, how it affected yeah. you. There you go, um, Dalton. You're now Togepi. I'm actually. Yes. I'm waiting for it to appear on. Oh, there we go. Love that. But yeah, I think I can oh. speak for both me and Dalton. So we both entered lockdown as bartenders. And are currently mm. two very different men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a bartender, but. Not. <laughs> but Dalton, what was it like for you when the when the first kind of lockdowns and restrictions were put into place, and you were told that look, you're probably not going to be able to work for much longer? What, um, what was that like? What was going through your head? At first, I was like, "Sweet time off work, <laughs> really needed it." Party, it was... party, 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 yeah. party. Um, and then you slowly grow to miss it, and you miss it even more. But then after a while, all the novelty wears off of the fact that you get to just stay at home and play Xbox and do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, it only lasts so long, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then once it runs out, you're just like, well, I just want to go back to work now. And I've been like that since, well, for pretty much it's, it's a year. pretty much been a year now, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yep. We, came, we went back to work for a little while. It was like two months we went back to work. And everything seemed to be going okay. And then... People started taking a piss around the country and that. Oh, you got to go back. My, rate started going up. My bar never opened back up. We said we uh, did. Countrywide, we, you know, that we, we just weren't going to. Yeah. 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 Down here, it was okay for a little while, and we had the rules set in place. It still wasn't busy, but it was busy enough to keep us going. And the eat <laughs> out to help out was like massive, just for our mental state yeah, of work because we could just great for yeah. Work. It was like having like. Normally, place I work at, Friday and Saturday is a mental, and it's like normal everyday world. But it turned out like our oh, Fridays and Saturdays turn into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday because he had to help out, and we were just rammed all day. Yep. And it was just mental. Then that finished, and it just got quiet again, and then started to get more busy, and then loads of just the, all the keep reopening and shutting. It just it was just horrible. Yeah. Because it was and just you, you, were, you were going to furlough, weren't you? Yeah, I'm still fellow. Yeah. 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 Um, what what was that like having to move from that to that? Was it you know, not going into specifics, but were you making more money, less money? What did you have to try and change in your budgets to to cope with that? So, furlough the company I'm at is weird because for the first part of the lockdown, for about the first month, my company was paying what everything. No government, none of the government money was coming towards us at all. And they were just working out by themselves the way the government said they were working out. And it was just very up and down money-wise. And then they, when they went into the government scheme, it averaged itself out for a little while. And then they've gone back to it now where it, the way they work is if you've been with the company longer than a year, it will go on your average wages from that time last year that you'll get paid 80% of. Right. Not what you would be working now. Mm. So like from October, November onwards, I was getting paid my average from the year before because that's when it hit my year mark as a part of the company. So then it's basically just randomized each week of what you're going to get because they just average it off of whatever you were doing last year, basically. Mm -hmm. It's very weird, very yeah. complicated. Yeah, it must be very difficult to try and like plan things out ahead. Oh yeah, you can't. Yeah. I don't know how much money I'm getting each week. It will sometimes be 250, then it will go down to 180, then it will go back up to 220, then go down to 150, like week by week, just mm -hmm. changes every week. It's very weird. Be horrible. It makes it very hard to save money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. I can only imagine. In a similar, but I know from conversations we've had, Dalton, that <laughs> it's going to be quite different for me versus you. I kind of half lift of tips that was like my lifestyle uh so i was also a bartender at uni so my wage went on like rent bills and like food like going out money and like 
any extra stuff I wanted to get was through tips. But we got to keep our own tips, where I know you didn't, did you? Yours was split. Yeah, ours was averaged out because dickheads who work for the pub decided to ruin it for everyone else and mm -hmm. start trying to steal money. Because the way we used to work it when we wasn't shared out was that your tips get you put your tips in like like we just take like a short glass or something from the bar and whatever tips you get that shift you put it in there. If there's any like differences in the tills, the tips will be used to sort that out. Then whatever's left is yours from that yeah. glass. But then people started like getting like a ten quid tip off one of the regulars that you know knows all of us and then they'd just stick it in their pocket and I'd put it in a glass and people were caught like three times doing that and then basically it just got put that everyone shares it out between themselves. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it just kind of ruins it yeah. for everyone. Just yeah. goes in my massive tip jar and then gets averaged out between everyone else. Yeah. So for like so, yeah. for me the way we did it was like small tips like you know I'll keep the change kind of tips you'd keep to yourself yeah. but then anything major like over a fiver we'd put in like you said a jar at the back of the bar and split it between like the two halves of the bar if you got what I meant so I always worked yeah. rear side because that's where like all the hen pies and stuff used to be so we always <laughs> used to get loads of tips because I I was one of the uh, cocktail bartenders at, at the place we worked it was great because if a girl sees oh, if, if a girl sees you make a, a pretty pink cocktail for her and then you carry on talking to that whole group they will She's give you tips they you. will give you yeah. tips mm -hmm. Yep, that was very smart of you. Uh, so then, or you just could be very nice and sweet to old people, then you definitely get. Uh, uh, again, same, but then yeah. moving from that to lockdown, uh, where you have no money for you know your expenditures, you, it becomes very rough. <laughs> um, luckily, I had you need to bide me over, so I wasn't getting drunk every weekend. I say I was definitely was getting drunk every every like other day. Oh, it was cheaper to drink at home though, isn't it? So. Oh yeah, like, it doesn't cost as much. Big up Aldi. Big up. Uh, what's the big retail store called? Costco. Big up Costco. Great. <laughs> yeah. But how was the start of lockdown for you, Ben? Because very different. Um. Yeah, it was very different for me. So I obviously I'm at university in Norway at the moment. Um, so we didn't really get hit as bad as the UK did in the beginning. It more came around uh, probably May time, I think, was, was when restrictions started coming in. And this was during my leading up to my exam period uh, for the end of my first year. Um, all of the classes, all of the lectures suddenly became online and there was no sort of like real support group because they weren't expecting it. They weren't prepared for it at all. So it was kind of like being left in the dirt. Um, so it was very difficult to try and adjust to that while living by yourself. You weren't able to like go and see friends. You weren't able to go and connect with people and try and study together because you just weren't allowed to. Um, so that definitely had a big impact on my results for that term. Fortunately, they let us retake them later on, so it wasn't a huge deal. But it was definitely a big shock to the system when you weren't getting the grades that you wanted and what you were expecting to get. Um, so it was it was a big shock for us, really. Especially like the first year of university, you don't really know what to expect. You're still getting used to the different uni life, living by yourself. So for all of a sudden in the first semester to be getting used to everything and getting to know people and then nothing, no contact, no, no proper connections with other people. Um, so I, I actually found that quite difficult. I went into a bit of a slump, wouldn't really call it like depressed or anything like as far as that, but definitely, you know, you wake up. Your desk is next to your bed. You don't actually like go outside or do anything. You just wake up, sit in your chair, spend seven hours, eight hours at your desk, go back to bed. It was um yeah, it was quite it was quite tough really. Um, very difficult to get used to and get out of. Mm -hmm. uh, and it took probably like three months until I moved back home to my parents' house um, for me to kind of get out of it and start a proper daily routine. That was that was getting better for me. So yeah, it was it was difficult. Yeah, yeah I feel that. Mm. I I don't want to say I half see COVID as a blessing, but I was a hundred percent not passing my final year of uni if it wasn't for COVID. Uh, 
I was so behind on my final year project. It just didn't work. I couldn't get it to work. I was spending 12 hours a day in the lab. And then it just stopped. And they were like, cool. And I had a meeting like two weeks afterwards. And that was like two weeks of me doing no work. So I was stressing the fuck out at the start of COVID. And then I had a meeting with my, uh, what they call professors. And they were like, you're purely going theoretical now. We're going to send you over a, la a laptop that whole has all the licenses on it. You're going to do all simulation work. So I got the laptop, opened it up to like do some work on it. Nothing was on there. It didn't even have Windows loaded. I was like, cool. So they've cool. definitely sent me the wrong laptop. So I had another meeting and they were like, cool. We'll send you the program let on, on your own laptop. Do the best you can. And we're pretty much going to give you the grade we thought you were going to get at the start of the year. I was like... Yeah. Nice. I then ended it's, up with a better grade. So it's really tough when you, you can't really be mad at the universities for being unprepared when realistically nobody was prepared. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Nobody, yeah, nobody can prepare for what actually. But, yes. but when you like you're at a university and you you're there and you need the support, mm -hmm. and then they can't give it to you and they say you're on your own. Um, you know, show up to your online lectures, and you have this many hours a day or whatever. Yeah. And for the rest of the day, you're kind of like, what am I supposed to do? Like, what am I actually doing right now? I think the one thing unis have messed up on was reopening it for all courses this year. So, like, every all the new students moved to the universities whenever it was. I then got told to either move out immediately because lockdown was happening again or live there on their own. Our students are now left with mass massive debts for places they didn't ever didn't really live in. Yeah. yeah. They're doing courses that they don't really go in for. Like, it's just, I believe it's engineers, medics, uh, nurses, and a few other students, like, in around STEM areas that actually have to go in for uni and that. Yeah. But the rest yeah. of them, they can literally have just done an online course rather than having to pay for the whole uni experience like nine yeah. and a quarter grand for what was it a few youtube videos i'd be pissed i'd be super pissed so would i you know wait, wait, that's why i'm kind of glad i didn't ever go to uni so much if i did i'd probably still be there now with the stuff that i wanted to do mm -hmm. and the fact that i didn't go and now this has happened it's kind of helped me with it in opposite ways not helps me because of work <laughs> yeah everyone's been caught more than one way by this oh yeah i guess 100 mm. percent. but then a better question i guess for ben is how was moving during covid um it was it was very difficult to try and book flights and organize flights because you know one place had one sort of restriction and like you had to have a certain test done there but then the next place was like you need to have this done and this done and it was all very difficult um i was i was probably about a month of searching just after my last exams that i'd taken uh, to come back in the summer mm -hmm. and i was able to luckily i was able to find a flight where i was going like from from norway to germany germany to the uk and then uk back down to jersey so it was it was a it was a long day had what time did I get? It was stupid o'clock in the morning, like four o'clock in the morning or something. Had to get tested, um, you know, make sure that I was all safe, masks and everything. Dead quiet at the airport, nothing like you'd ever really seen before. Um, flew down to Germany, was in there for a couple of hours. Um, again, completely dead airport. And then up to the UK, and I had to stay in the UK overnight, unfortunately. They were allowing people to travel to Jersey as long as you were only in the UK for less than 24 hours or something like that. Um, and it was just so happened that the flights lined up perfectly that by the time I got to the UK, I was able to take a flight to Jersey the, the following morning. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, so it was very lucky that I was able to get back. But like I said earlier, um, I was in a bit of a slump before I'd come back to Jersey. So I really needed it to, to see my family, to see friends again. Uh, it, yeah, it just helped me get out of that. Yeah, and then obviously quarantining and testing in Jersey, um, that was like a 
a seven day thing or something so it wasn't it wasn't too bad i think they were very prepared by that point you know they had a couple of months to figure out what they were doing figure out what the testing situation was like so we had a had a test at the airport waited at home for like a day or two and then yeah it was it was fine after that i don't think it was too bad but once they'd like figured out what they were supposed to do and like how to prepare for this and, and what to do with people trying to get into the island they had it fairly sorted so um yeah it, it wasn't too bad speaking of tests hmm. have we all had i'm guessing we've all had tests haven't we yeah yes. multiple. not fun uh yeah not fun we all had the, the old swab ones. Old swab yeah. one, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fucking horrible. I know. Oh, I, horrible. I don't think it works. Like everyone does it slightly different. So in Jersey, I was I'd read on the on the flight before coming down, like what it was, you know, where it goes, all that stuff. And when I got there, you know, it wasn't actually too bad. They didn't go that far into my nose or whatever. Oh, they mine was horrible. Mine was horrid. Yeah, but I did the self. I did the home one where i had to do it myself because i was isolating because i got ill and we already had one person at work who tested positive when we were back at work at this point and two people off work isolating waiting for their results as well so i had to do it at home and doing it yourself is horrible Mm -hmm. well here's the thing so i've had a couple now in jersey i came back at the summer and then i came back um mid-november for christmas period because my university shut down but when I came back to Norway this time, last week, honestly, it was I was not expecting it. She went to my brain. Like, <laughs> I was crying afterwards. I literally had tears running down my face. And she was like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. But you just, like, violated my, my nose. Because pre- <laughs> like before she did the test, she was like, have you had one of these before? Do you know what it's about? And I was like, yeah, of course I have. It's like, I'm fine. I can do this. And honestly, it's not like any <laughs> tests I had before. It was horrible. Yeah. So, yeah. luckily for me, like the 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 nicer test. Luckily, I have to do that once a week because Dave works in a uh, was it the the vaccine clinic. Mm, right. So so I have to do those one a week. So luckily they're fine and you can do them yourself. Just scrape out a bit of your tonsils and. Wait half an hour, but that's not too bad then. Compared to like the first time I had it, it was when I was going home from. I was going from university back home to see my family and my grandparents, and I wanted to. I wanted to go home and make sure that I had, I was I was clean. I got fucking jabbed in the brain. Like honestly, it was a quick in out motion in my through the nostril i was like uh, i literally got sent into a spasm no idea what had just happened to me i was just like uh. Wait, so, so she they, they did an in out one yeah the one i had in norway she put it in did the little like you know swabble it around so you're trying to get all of, all of whatever and then she left it in there because she didn't pick up the little test tube that she was going <laughs> to put it into afterwards so i'm just sitting there with my head back you know with this cotton swab halfway down my down my nose and she's like gone off to the other table to go pick out a thing oh it was, yeah it was horrible <laughs> okay maybe it was a blessing me doing it by myself yeah, yeah I, I think you got very lucky <laughs> 100 <laughs> got off work for a week as well yeah. all right. uh... so I, I ordered it like as soon as I started isolating when I got ill and it took like three days to get there and I got the results like three days after I did it as well. Hmm. Even though they said it's like an instant response. Like, it would be like a day until you hear the results. And I sat there waiting for ages. By the time I got the results back, I knew I didn't have COVID because I was fine. Like I was better. Yeah. So how, how long did you have to wait for your results? Um, Not overly long. I want to say like a day. A day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was, it was similar to mine as well. Um, one of the tests I had to do took like three days, but that's just because that was when the whole error thing happened in the oh, UK. An error thing? Oh, really? So, oh, don't want it. So at the start of at the start of lockdown in the UK, they have this like track and trace system. Mm. It was stored on an Excel spreadsheet. And the Excel spreadsheet just 
binned itself fully. Oh god. Uh, and they they also use a similar one to track like uh, everyone's test results, and that's how they logged it onto the track and trace. And because the track and trace one was down, that stopped that one being updated and sent out to people. I was just like, cool. Yeah. So I had to wait three days in. <clears throat> where was I? I was three days in Leeds before I could move to Manchester. To yeah. So Leeds, I went to uni in Leeds, then moved to Manchester during lockdown. It wasn't overly bad because I already knew a few people here. But the fact that I've lived here nine months now and for about all but a week of those nine months have seen these four walls of my bedroom, it's a bit depressing. Yeah. <laughs> it's very sad when like you're just living in the same you know, square box mm -hmm. for pretty much a whole year. Yeah. When I moved from the same square box for about six months to a different square box for the past four, however long it is since I moved three, mm -hmm. whatever. So, yeah, what a little bit like, of a change of scenery. What was that like moving for you? Was, was it difficult because of COVID or, you know? Um, to be honest, no. It's, I've, I've, it's the first time I've ever moved house. So I'd, okay. I wouldn't know what it was like for COVID, but as far as I could see, it was pretty well done to be honest like we had we woke up like eight and we all came packed everything up that already hadn't been packed but everything in the lorry went off they went and waited at the new house we just had to wait in that house for the exchanges and the handovers to all be done then once the handover were done we went and we had to wait about like five hours for the handover to be completed and then mm -hmm. came here unloaded everything it took like a week to get everything sorted out properly uh or like live so it's more like a home rather than a building stacked full of boxes. Yeah. And then since then, it's just been a slow job of slowly getting everything done because well, it's, it's not a perfect house moved into. It's a house that needs work, but my mum sees it as a home for her, for like her to just stay here now rather than, you know, keep moving. So yeah, as far as I can know, it's really smooth. Didn't take long at all. Mm. It's about I think, two I think hours packing, two problem. hours unpacking. Yeah, I think it's amazing how some businesses adapted so quickly to, to all the regulations that came in and how to operate during a pandemic. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then you've got my, yeah. where I currently work that's still traipsing through the mud. I've not been into the office yet. I've been working here for nine months. Uh, <laughs> bundle of joy. I'm sure <laughs> the three people in chat that could, am I working? Attest that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Is the uh, office yeah, I mean... completely shut then? No, 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 no. People are in the office. It's just, it's kind of on a, if you need to be in the office basis. And because I don't work on yeah. software, I don't need to be in the office. There's a few meetings where they're like, oh, Aaron, do you want to come in for this? And I was like, I don't want to come in for a half an hour meeting. No. So I've just stayed at home. In retrospect, I probably should have done because it's a day out of my room. Yeah, true. But then I yeah, work. No, I, I agree how some businesses didn't cope. I actually, um, my girlfriend, she. She went without computer monitors and right, so she works in uh, finance. Mm -hmm. So she kind of needs, you know, a phone, a computer. Um, she does like administration work, so she has lots of clients that like need to get in contact and they need to do payments and all this that, and the other. And she literally went nine months without access to a computer. Her work made her use her own personal laptop, which I think That's is just sick. ridiculous. Um. They definitely, in nine months, they should have been able to organize some sort of oh, yeah. something, even, yeah. even just a laptop, like at, at the most. And and for a, a big finance company not to be able to organize something like that was quite crazy. Yeah, it's a bit odd. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I know a lot of people that have been infected a lot worse than I have. So I do actually, actually count myself quite lucky. Uh, so I, I, I count myself lucky as well. Mm -hmm. to be like the amount of nurses I know that have been fully screwed over by this, it's mm -hmm. awful. Um, but yeah, do you... question for the chat and to you guys: Have you guys had anything cancelled because of lockdown? I know a lot of people have like concerts stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, go on, Dalton. I, I, well, 
I'm pretty sure you both know about it because I don't go about two days without mentioning it. But um, I would have seen Green Day's mega tour last summer if it wasn't for lockdown because it was the their tour where they had like the main two sporting acts for Fallout Boy and Weezer, and then there were going to be like three or two extra ones as well that were just going to be announced like closer to the time, and it never got around to happening because mm-hmm. if lockdown that happened, that was going to be in June. Yes, it was in I June because I was going to go to the Huddersfield yeah. show. I yeah, was very I excited think, for it. Yeah, because we had tickets for the Wembley one, me and my dad and my brother, and that got cancelled. And also my work Christmas party got cancelled as well. That was booked for the summer. Yes, that's right. I said Christmas party <laughs> and summer. Yep. Oh, no, um, yeah. Our work Christmas party for 2019 happened in August 2020. It was, it, was, it was when everything reopened we were like cool let's get fucking hammered so i traveled back up from manchester to leeds i don't work for the company anymore but still celebrate christmas with them Fair. well uh, i can't say anything cancelled really i mean i was university i didn't really have many plans but i was actually quite lucky it, was it march i think march uh i went to london and this was kind of just literally days <laughs> before the lockdown stuff started happening um yeah i went to london to see my sister and uh, meet up with my girlfriend uh, somehow a lewis capaldi concert was still on and we managed to get tickets like five hours before the concert was on i know it sounds really bad you know we went to a concert right before a pandemic but man it was all like you know fairly well regulated so it was nice to be able to get to go and do something at least before the whole thing started Mm-hmm. Yeah, I suppose so. I know a lot of things quieted down. I suppose I probably wasn't as busy as it would have been if it was a like normal everyday concert. Not well, I and, found like, things got probably, busier. Yeah. They did for a little while. I think because especially my work, we were busy for the first weekend since the, all the news broke out about mm-hmm. it, and it may be hitting us. We were busy for that one week, and we made the most money with five we've ever made since i started working there and then from then on it was just a downward spiral of just being absolutely no money made at all i have the exact date of let me have a look it was march 21st and 22nd so the the weekend before lockdown got instated i worked those two days uh we'd worked out that from our bar i'm not going to name the bar because i'm pretty sure it's like confidential information stuff like that We'd brought in a million pounds from those two days just because of the amount of people that came in. It was stupid. Uh, yeah, that is, that is mental. I mean, it was it was that week before where, you know, every single shop was out of toilet paper and pasta <laughs> and canned foods. Yeah, that was mental. It was... I, some people, I, I just couldn't understand why you were buying, like, you know, 10 packs of toilet paper. Yeah. You, yeah. How much you shittings have that much toilet paper? <laughs> I, know. I know. Like, oh, yeah. these people must still have a toilet paper lying they, around, they right? Must yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. They must do. Unless they sold it, but... Well, no, people were selling them, weren't they? When, like, um, eBay and shit like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, trying to make double the money. You know, it's 12 packets of it wrong. People were paying the money. <laughs> I remember like, I remember stupid. people selling... Is it is the, uh... The mi- original mint... Uh, fucking shower gel. They were selling it for like a fifteen pounder bottle because it was sold out everywhere because <laughs> it was out of lockdown. I was like, "Why?" <laughs> uh, That's the whole point of what people do though, you know, with buying oh, and things on. People yeah. are doing it still with like the new Xboxes and whatever, mm-hmm. buying them for four hundred and fifty quid when they come back in stock and selling them for nine hundred pound on eBay. It's awful. Let's have a look yeah. at chat. So Kayla says that her brother's wedding might get cancelled. I've had yeah. my fair share of weddings cancelled on me this year. Both ones I was gonna I work. To engaged, but yeah. I I'm, I'm I'm a man of many. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna finish that sentence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, a b- bunch of my friends' weddings have been cancelled. Uh, one of them cancelled three times now because it was gonna happen in the end of March. It then got moved to October. It then got moved to this April, and it's now been cancelled again. But they've not set a date. They finally learned the lesson. Of not just rescheduling yeah. it. 
yeah, you just got to wait until everything's blown over so Back you can to... do it, really. Yeah. yeah. Uh... Well, there we go. So, um, Georgia just confirmed March 13th was the day of lockdown in the UK, and I think we were in London from the the 9th until the 12th like my flight back to norway was on the 12th that's how lucky we were to kind of get away oh jeez before everything shut oh, yeah. down mm -hmm. yeah uh george also said she was due to go to paris but uh, that got yeah, cancelled yeah that was that was another uh, summer trip that got cancelled there was another trip that jazz jazz was had flights at the time of the original lockdown for him and the lads to go to thailand and vietnam for their 30th birthdays but it got cancelled. Oh god, that is Which sounds like such an amazing, an amazing holiday. Trip, yeah. 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 So I know I talked to you guys about it. Me and my housemate David were going to go travelling in South Oh well, I was gonna go travelling with my housemates from last year, and he was gonna go travelling with his housemates from last year. And we were planning on me to go up at some point in South America. And we had this whole trip planned. I was gonna go to like Venezuela, Peru. Uh, Brazil for a little bit, Argentina. I was so looking forward to it. I'd saved like a year and a half. Still not got my money back for half of it. <laughs> because the airlines are just dead. <laughs> yeah. No, it's um, Richard Branson sold loads of airplanes, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Over the course of the lockdowns. And yeah, I mean, the whole airline they can't industry afford to keep just, the company going. Yeah, just went to shit, really. Yeah. I mean, I think it was loaded the those. older models, wasn't it, that he sold. He got rid of yeah. loads of yeah. companies so that he could get some money and so keep the company flowing. I mean, you've you've seen the pictures of all the like British Airways that have like taken all of their aircraft to this one airport, and it's just hundreds and hundreds of aircraft mm -hmm. lined up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know how much Ben will know about this, but before first lockdown, is it Thomas Cook went out of business? Yeah. That that was that wasn't before that was. Quite a long time before that, I think. It was about. Well, did, it was about six. They name change. No, they. They have moved to two. They changed the two E, didn't they? Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that was quite a bit before lockdown. Uh, oh, maybe. Ba ben, basically, what I was saying, there's a subsidiary of Thomas Cook that just straight went broke, like went out of business. Do you know how much money they've saved because they weren't a company during lockdown? It's something stupid, like in the millions, like money they've saved because they're not a company anymore. Fucking hell! I just like it was February. Thomas Cocad says I, I thought it was. I thought it was like it was very yeah, close to that border. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I knew it was whilst I worked at the bar because I used to walk past the Thomas Cook building every morning, and at one point it just changed into homeless person central. I was yeah. like, oh, hello. I remember it happening, but I just thought that was when I was working at the old pub, not the new one. Mm -hmm. Obviously not. Yeah. Oh, it's mad to think that was only a year ago, though. Yeah, I know. But then again, you've also got to think that was like a whole year ago. You know, you say it's only a year ago. But in another perspective, it was a whole year ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just crazy how time has flown. I'm just trying to think of like anything else comparable to what happened a year ago that isn't covid related <laughs> um without football <laughs> for the three months we were about it oh that three months was yeah. hell the i really got cancelled football sports everything across the world everything was, was dead yeah do you remember the bit of hope when they said like, oh yeah football return on like like the start of april and it did for like a week and a half and yeah, i got cancelled again that. i was like yeah you're teasing me. I think that's when everyone knew that it was starting to get serious. Like before, yeah. like the lockdown happened, and you saw like the Champions League games with no crowds and stuff like that, and you thought, and this when people, like, especially me and people at work, were thinking, okay, this could hit us, like because mm -hmm. <laughs> everyone was so oblivious to it, weren't they? Especially in England, just like ah, we'll be fine. It won't oh. hit us. It'll die out somewhere. Yeah. And then Def definitely a month later, in, in recovery <laughs> time when yeah. you know, it kind of first hit the news about uh, was it Wuhan. Mm -hmm. and how that was going on and everyone criticised them they were like oh yeah of course like they're eating bats all this and the other and you know oh, two the... months later down the line I'm sorry I ref sorry, this may be a political thing but I refuse to believe it came from fucking bats there's nothing uh, there's no I... way this came from bats 
I am under the imp- I am of the belief that it came from a botched science experiment, yeah. but I believe yes. this is something we should keep off of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a topic Be- for another time. Before we get cancelled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll keep a mouth shut about it. Ellie's sc- okay. Yeah, Ellie's school <laughs> had a. Weird by the okay, this is size of what was actually happening. Okay, so Ellie's school had a trip to Italy because Corona was on the other side of Italy. I just That's remember that. Like, yeah, yeah, uh, Italy was like one of the worst places in Europe for a while, wasn't it? Hey, yeah, it was the first country to get hit really, really, bad, hard. really hard, and then yeah. go into a proper because they shut yeah. off their whole borders to everyone, and it was the first country to do it before we even went into a lockdown, let alone shutting yeah. off borders. So yeah, they they got it very early. So we were so just so seeing all the, like, the footage how, like, of singing on the street somewhere. Powerful this could be. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys remember on the news and everything, all the res- like people in I think it's Venice, all the, like out their windows singing the song together, like the yeah. whole city singing mm-hmm. a song. And then someone dubbed over it with them singing the fucking KSI song. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I always, I always remember seeing that on the news, and I was running to work the next day, and I remember speaking to my boss, thinking, "Do you really think this could hit us?" And he was like, "I'm pretty sure it will now." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I. Yeah. So I've always been in two minds of like, I didn't think it would hit this country this hard. I thought we were better. I don't want to say I thought we were better than this, but Jesus <laughs> Christ, our government is retarded in some sense. Yeah. Well, you, you I know, mean, you've got, you've, got like, people, you've, you've got to give them blame on the people like, as well. Yeah, yeah, it's the There's people. Only so much, like the government can tell the, the people to do something, but whether or not the people do it is another question. Yeah, yeah. and uh, in all fairness to every government, it's the same as companies. No, no one's prepared. Expected this yeah. to happen, no, and nobody was prepared for it. And like people blame Boris Johnson for everything that's happened. Give him some respect. He mm-hmm. has worked his fucking socks off during this whole yep. thing. And like, yeah, he I really think... has tried. One he may not have made the right the decisions. Media. But... The media portrays, yeah. and they, they always use hindsight, and it really pisses me off because they go, you know, we we know this now. Why didn't he make this decision three weeks ago? Well, we didn't know three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. we wouldn't be in this situation, would we? Like, yeah. we've got to work with what's happening right this second. And yeah. the media constantly battling at him, saying, well, we know this now. Why didn't you do that back then? Mm-hmm. And it just it makes yeah. it very difficult, and you can't really say that the government was too late to everything because, you know, th- they get the news, they have to plan things out and do stuff. They Be- can't do it before it's yeah. happened because it was a worldwide pandemic. As soon as something happened, the government has to react to it when we heard about it because there's no way to keep it a secret, yeah. and yeah. there's a bit of a sense of like cool they could make a split decision instantly and get it pushed out in a day what if that's the wrong decision yeah yeah like there's and a then... there's a few instances where they did that and it's been the wrong decision so they've decided taking a bit more time over everything yeah and, and in that instance where they make a quick decision and you know they're expecting to, to put out a decision very quick and it goes wrong then the media goes oh why are they just like making the decisions this quickly you know it takes time to to formulate a proper plan mm-hmm. yeah so it, it, it's very difficult for the government, I think, is a lot of pressure put on them. Yeah, and let's be honest. Sorry if there are any American support of American people in the chat. We could have had Trump. Thank God we had Boris. Mm. Yeah. Because like, in fairness to Trump, he started off really well with this whole pandemic thing. And then some of the stuff went a bit downhill. Started, yeah, it went a bit downhill. He got that. very first, like, caught months. up in the elections. Yeah, I think the first like month of this pandemic, Trump did a very good job, and then it just went downhill from there yeah. on. And yeah, he couldn't really save himself after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kayla asked, "What's the opinion on of the US not having lockdown at all at the moment?" Well, With... I think some states, very some stupid, states went into yeah. lockdown though, didn't they? I think it, it wasn't like a countrywide S- lockdown. It so I believe it was state decided. by state. But yeah. I know, mm. so the biggest state, Texas, has just come out, I want to say. Or has relaxed their lockdown rules drastically. I'm Probably sure Justin can tell us, I think. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But I think 
in a country like America where you've got some very out there people, I'm going to say, it's very hard to kind of chicken pen them. Yeah. Uh, yes, Justin says that Texas is out. Yeah, well, he put, yeah, we out this bitch, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to quote him by word by word. Yes, yes, we out this bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah, Kane's put about New York when the pandemic hit. Mm hmm. Probably one of the hardest hit places in the world, really, wasn't it, New York? Yeah, it was. New York was crippled, pretty much. Yeah. Like. Like the infection rate was just mental. Out of. New York. <laughs> then that had a. I remember reading somewhere that had such a negative effect on like Wall Street and everything like that as well. Oh, because yeah. it just kind of like dominoed effect to everything in the US. Not crumbling, but just been had a chunk out of the knee pretty much. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was the problem, right? You know, you've got to try and close things down to stop the spread, but then you're also closing down the economy. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have the economy, you don't have the support network for the the hospitals and all the resources that you need to kind of combat it at the same time. Yeah. So yeah, it was it, definitely a domino effect that really messed everything up. Yeah. The Karens of this world are ruining Karens. the pandemic. Oh, Karens. We could have a whole episode. I'm sure me and Dalton could have a whole episode on Karens. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. <laughs> Karens need a piece of my mind. Mm -hmm. Um... And in case you didn't know, Kuma's a... Uh... Oh, so New York's governor is apparently to blame for everything that's happened in New York. Yeah. Uh, his name according, is... According to Justin. According to Justin. Gonna... Yeah. According we're to Justin. According that, to but... Justin. <laughs> this isn't facts. We're not stating facts. Ah, <laughs> uh, but yes. What else was on our agenda? The whole conversation going on about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, we could start to talk about, you know, opportunities that came out of the pandemic and mm -hmm. um, while we were in this kind of lockdown and you're not really working, what else you're able to focus on and, and try and improve in your own life? I think one thing to say is that this podcast would never have happened if it wasn't for the yeah, lockdown. Exactly. I mean, like, the whole of Twitch, all of the podcast. Yeah. yeah, everything that has happened with our group, especially, none of that would have happened, mm -hmm. I don't think. Maybe it would have, but... Never know. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, only, really got, I only got out. involved in it because I was when I was isolating. Yeah, I mean, this was when the second kind of lockdown in uh, Norway took place, and it was probably around mid October. I think is when yeah. when we really started like proper getting to know each other, and you know, this group formed. And and since then, because of lockdown, and you know, you haven't been able to do other things, other activities. We've able, been able to develop the Twitch and the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, so like, I would have never joined this group if it wasn't for me trying to promote my fucking Fiverr store, which now no longer exists. Uh just to render people on Twitch and making stuff for them. So I remember it was Nick, I made a banner and a and an intro for him, which I believe he still uses both, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh but so he, he got you off of Fiverr. No, so I I went into his chat and was just like, I am trying to promote my Fiverr. Is it okay if I make a few things for you and see if you'd like them? And he was like, oh yeah, sure, sure, wow. sure. And I played a few games with him whilst I was making them. Yeah. I then came in, threw him on, and he, I think he stuck with them. Don't know whether he ever promoted my Fiverr because I got no business of it, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not sure. But... <clears throat> but yeah, and it's weird to think that what, five months down the line now? We're all still mm. chatting to each other. More of us have started streaming. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of mental what the whole like community that we've built up on here started off with a few people where more and more people joined as we went on. We have to put up a gi now, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it okay? I don't think it's really no, okay. No, it's not really okay, is it? <laughs> oh, no. we're, we're bullying a guy that's at work. Let's let him, we'll let him be. Ah, no, fuck him. 
Um, he's going to be editing this back later, yeah. He's going to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Guy, we, uh, we appreciate you as an editor. So, delete the video. They appreciate yeah, you please. as an editor. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's two against one, it's fun. You still yeah. have a majority of appreciation. Oh, but yeah, like, what big occasions have happened on Twitch that wouldn't have happened this year? Me waxing my leg, that probably yeah, wouldn't sorry. have happened. That was very big. Sorry, uh, <laughs> the face reveal, I think that's um I, yeah. 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 Uh <laughs> fucking five inch furry. <laughs> As I see Ellie's <laughs> wow. comment come into my yeah. chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that was like just simultaneous with all the stupid and funniest moments of my Twitch channel. It happened so early on. And whilst I was so sleep deprived, this is the, the stream ended after my 24 hour. I was just sat there kind of dead and like just having a laugh with everyone. And Ellie just spouts some wrong shit. I was just, we all just bullied him for it. <laughs> mm. oh, I mean, not not only did like, you know, we all start, not all of us, but most of us, a lot of us started streaming and all of these opportunities. But the fact that we've connected with people from literally all across the world is incredible. Mm -hmm. Hey, we've got people. I'm not going to say any names, or you know, but you know, we've some got people in America, South America, some um, some amazing people, people from like Canada and uh, yeah. France and stuff, all and India. all of Europe, all India, of, yeah, even as well. India, one which is absolute amazing. penis from Peru. Yeah, not naming names. Yeah, not naming names. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's, she's, she's embracing it twice. Do the yeah, 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 that's me. <laughs> oh, bless her. Oh. And then some, some of other stuff that's happened in my life as well. I would never have built the beer can Christmas tree that I did if it wasn't for lockdown. Like. I think, that... I think that is a true sign of locked arm right there, yeah. isn't it? That <laughs> yeah. summed up so... Christmas 2020. Yeah. <laughs> what can we do different this year? Make the tree out of beer cans. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was, so, for some reason, in the flat complex that, that I live in currently, the recycling never gets emptied, so the bins are always full. So we always have massive piles of, like, pizza boxes and beer cans and everything on the side of our counter, and just, like, folded up into plastic bags. And then one day I was like, shall we get a Christmas tree this year? And then he, we both looked at each other like, nah. I was like, yeah, what a waste of money. What a waste of money. He was like, shall we make it out of that pile there? He <laughs> was like, yeah. <laughs> it lasted like throughout Christmas. It, it died whilst we were away. It like fallen over and crippled itself. I was, gonna, I was literally about to say, how on earth did it die? Like, unlike a real tree where it probably starts. You know, yeah. we'll take it. Sleeves. <laughs> yeah. Would have thought that your beer can Christmas tree would have stayed alive for a little bit longer. No, no the, the the leaves started falling off. The the duct tape started to yeah. like unstick because of the beer that was still left in the cans that we didn't really wash out properly. Metal started eroding. Mm hmm. I'm sad. Okay, let's put a paragraph in. <laughs> You also have so much being on lockdown. Oh, wow, so. okay. Oh, 100%. Just valuing life outside of lockdown is so big. Mm. I've not seen yeah. my grandma in a year and a half now. Because I was... So, I saw her before Christmas 2019. I was like, I want to finish my uni degree. I want, I want to concentrate on it. So, I was like, doing uni and work, I was doing nothing. Apart from going out, like, maybe once a week. So, I didn't have time to go see family or anything. And then lockdown hit, and it's been a year now, and I saw my see my gran, and it feels really weird. I know I'm in a lucky sense of like, I haven't lost anyone. I know people that have lost people, and yeah. either due to COVID or other circumstances, but I haven't been able to go see them or haven't been able to have a funeral because of lockdown. It just shows like how much you take for granted when you're not in this situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. I mean, I'm, I don't think I've seen my nan and granddad since August, since my nan's birthday in August. So my birthday in July, my nan's in August, and then haven't seen him since. Because yeah. 
I haven't been able to go and see them. I think but it was I think... really fortunate. Sorry, go on. Go on. No, no, yes, I think I didn't go in when I saw them on my birthday. I knocked on the door and we spoke in distance away or whatever. Um, so they wanted to give me my presents and whatever. And then I think then my nan's birthday, they asked me if I wanted to come in and I was just sort of like, only if you're okay with it. Because I was really protective because I felt I was still working at that point and everything in case I did have it or whatever. Yep. And I didn't want to put them in danger, but they were like, yeah, it was fine. Just go and sit on the other side of the living room or something. And then when you leave, we'll, you go to the door, then we'll go to the door once you're outside. So, I mean, so we made it nice and safe. But yeah, that was the last time I saw my grandparents, definitely. So I imagine you were in the same boat as me at the start of lockdown and even before. So I want to say from a few weeks after New Year's, you were really cautious about going anywhere because you worked at the bar, you were seeing loads of people. Yeah. And it's just I like... Wanna, I didn't want to do anything to jeopardise anyone's mm -hmm. lifestyle or anything like that or their families. So I was, I was really cautious about it. So I'd like to say, if like, outside of work and uni, I've been in lockdown. I've, like, been in self-isolation since last January now. Yeah. You know, I mean, pretty much the only people that I socialised with were... My house, that, yeah. Like, best mates that also were working... So, mm -hmm. if anything, we weren't putting each other at risk because we're already at risk because we're already out working. Like my mate um, Jordan works as the works at Royal Mail, so he's always out in the delivery van, either picking up and delivering whatever. Um, or then people that I work with that I'd socialise with, like if we went out for a beer or anything when the pubs were still open, I'd go out with them, not with anyone else, because we're technically in a bubble anyway. So it didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. I was working at a supermarket over the Christmas period as well. And you can imagine, even with lockdown restrictions and, and people being cautious and wearing masks, it's very difficult when, you know, you're seeing this many people at once and you don't really have that kind of control over who you're seeing. So apart from working, you're, you're at home, you're trying to stay away from your, your family as much as you can. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's very difficult. Ellie, go and go on. There you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, so from Ellie's comment is, I is all the rules are very unpolished. So in the sense of Ellie's, like, she would go to school with her friends and sit next to them in classrooms and stuff. As soon as the school bell rang for end of day, she wasn't allowed to go see them at all. Yeah, I think so that was sort of the point I was gonna make. Yeah. Like, a few of the rules were BS, but it's just like, I don't think there was a better way to encapsulate everything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's I... very difficult working yeah. at Waitrose. You know, you're seeing all of these people all the time, but then, you know, when my shift ends, I can't then, you know, go home and go and see a friend or, like, mm -hmm. go and meet up. It, it was kind of like that weird balance between, all right, so I'm allowed to to see all of these people at work and you know we're, we're socially distanced we have masks on but then i'm not allowed to do the same at someone's house and it's, it's very difficult to try and get used to that yeah so, so that was the main question that i was asked when i was working at the pub because obviously we'd be working and baron will know behind the bar is very hard to socially distance when you're working behind a bar with someone yeah um so we weren't we were wearing masks and everything when the, like before we were told we had to wear masks we weren't but then once we were told we had to, we did. Um, and the, we'd get questions all the time by people who either weren't allowed in or anything like that because they're in the group that they're not meant to be in. And they'd ask, well, look at you lot behind the bar and everything. You lot are next to each other and everything. So why can't we come in and be next to each other? And that was the main question that we always got asked mm -hmm. because we were allowed to by working, but they're not allowed to if they want to go and have a drink. It was, it was very weird. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure all three of us can agree the most annoying thing over the past year has been this. People wearing their face masks over their mouth but leaving their nose out. Oh, I literally God, saw someone earlier at the well. shop doing it. They weren't even doing it over their mouth. They literally had one of them, two girls, it must have been like 18. One of them had the face mask on properly. The other one had the face mask on but it underneath their chin. What's the fucking point like, in having it on? What's the point in having it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what's the point in having it on your face if it's not going to cover? It's anything? literally yeah, just a hindrance at that point. It's not helping you. <laughs> yeah, and and in the same line as you know, wearing it under your chin, it's 
having a mask on and it being like covering your face and everything, and then when you stop to go and talk to someone, pulling it down to talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what what is that all about? What, where does yeah. what in your mind does that make any sense? Yeah, that you're gonna like be like two meters apart from people while you're walking around the shop, and then when you see someone you know, you go and stand next to them and take your mask off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, it really I mean, me. admittedly, we did do that at work, but that was either when we were in the glass washroom or up in the staff room or something like that. We'd put it down to talk to each other then because we were working with each other. Yeah. And like, we're going to be do it like, when we arrive before work, when we're outside, we don't have the mask on while we're talking to each other. We just do it when the, like, you know, people can't see. But when you're doing it in, in the night and doing mm. that in a public place and you just don't bother with the mask, and it's just oh, also, I it's think, annoying thing. I think Dalton will agree with me. Momentary torture opening the glass wash with a face mask on. Oh, fuck it. Oh my god, that was it's the... even worse when you have glasses. When you have yeah, glasses. same. <laughs> yep. So you, you go all fogged, can't see, you can't breathe because there's just steam in your face mask, it's just boiling hair. It's like, ugh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that was the worst. <laughs> uh, yeah. On like an opposite to that, so we have a, a freezer, obviously, where we keep all the frozen stuff. And if you were in there for longer than, say, like, you know, two minutes, five minutes, the mask actually, like, froze. <laughs> and it would just be this crispy thing. So you had to like, always have, like, a couple of spares in your pocket in case you had to go into the freezer to do anything. Ah. That was, yeah, that was a hindrance. Um. Wait, surely in the freezer. No, I won't say it. I won't say it because it's wrong. But surely in a freezer, it would be fine because the virus dies at was it four degrees? Yeah, probably. I do. You know, when you're like having to rush down to grow some stuff out of the freezer, you don't really think about taking it on and off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it was just kind of amusing that it would freeze on your face and become this crispy crunchy thing i mean i know from people when i used to, I used to work at the audi warehouses in the supermarket not the um car company um but because i used to work in the chiller in there in the warehouse chiller i know that from talking to people that work there they don't they didn't have to wear masks and they still don't have to now because they're meant to but when they get there their bosses just tell them not to bother mm-hmm. because the virus would die as soon as it gets inside the chiller anyway so yeah there's no point so it's basically like a safe zone of like nothing being able to be caught there. Mm. Probably shouldn't have said that, but yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fine. You didn't name. You didn't <laughs> name a company. <laughs> I don't. I don't work there anymore. Nah. It's fine. <laughs> um. Right. What else have we got on the? Uh... What is something you've relied on over lockdown? Xbox. Yeah. Video games. Oh, that, was too, that was too quick, wasn't it? <laughs> Video games. <laughs> me, dominoes. In family. Like being able to oh. have that interaction with other. No, not necessarily, you know, like spending time with them, but just having oh, okay. like another human being like oh, okay. around yeah. you to talk to, mm-hmm. to, to make dinner with. That was one thing that while I was at university and I was living by myself, yeah. put me in that slump because I was just doing everything by myself. I didn't really have a purpose. Yeah, I guess so um, I I appreciated coming back home and at least being able to to live with my parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Hmm. I realise so between me living in Leeds and Manchester, I spent I think about three weeks at home. I hated it because I've not lived at home on, for like <clears throat> five years now, six years now. I'm old. Yeah. It's just, it's a different lifestyle at home. I just, I couldn't get on board with it. Also, Asian parents being like strict and whatever is another just another story, but it's just yeah. not being able to do my own thing when I wanted to is, was a massive thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I understand that. the independence like, part of it, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think for me, the independent part, like, you know, it was it was outweighed by having someone there. The, yeah, the comeback of having like someone there and being able to talk to people properly face to face. I I'm so glad that I've had someone to live with this whole time. Yeah, I can imagine it's not been too bad having like like a roommate or, or someone to be with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like all just 
binge watch TV every now and again. Like, we're almost through Snowpiercer and catching up to when it's finished. But that's another thing we can talk about. Another thing we can talk about another time. Ads has a major major fetish for a certain type of fish. Where does that come from? Uh, I just just shouted, cod, mate. <laughs> oh, that's one for Jazz there with the dad jokes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, rocking in your booty chair. Had to be one. Had to be one. Um, has lockdown affected the relationship between yourself and your other half? Um, so me and Dalton are out of this. I broke up with my so. Go on, Ben. Go on, Ben. Well, I mean, so uh, my partner, we've been in a long distance relationship since I went to university, you know, almost a year and a half ago now. So we were kind of used to being apart for quite a long time. You know, we would go three, four, five months without seeing each other. Mm -hmm. Um, And we were able, it was actually all right, to be honest, because we were able to see each other fairly often when I went back to Jersey over Christmas because we were allowed to see like one other person or like one other household, really. Right. Um, so, to be honest, like the, the relationship and everything was was all good. Um, and again, like like I was saying, with being able to see f- uh, family and parents and having someone to to talk to and not necessarily like do things with, but just to be there. Um, so it it was fairly alright for us, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It didn't affect us too badly. Yeah. It did get quite stressful at times when there was uncertainties whether like. You know, you'd be able to come home or like when you'd next see each other because before the pandemic, you know, we'd say, okay, well, we're going to see each other in three months. And, you know, we, we have flights booked and we know what's happening and we know what's going on. But as soon as it went into this uncertainty where, you know, we didn't know when the next time we were going to see each other, we didn't know if we were going to get flights to, to see each other, uh, it made it quite stressful and it was very difficult for yeah. a little bit. I can imagine. Hmm. But you're yeah, family-wise. Obviously, because we don't have a significant other. <laughs> so, it was the first, I want to say, two and a half... I'm going to say the quiz period of lockdown. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw my family a lot through there. It'd be like calls three times a week. Blah, blah. I got very sick of it very quickly, and then straight off the back of that going to live with my parents for three weeks i was like so done with it i hope they don't watch this hi mum and dad how are you um <laughs> it just got to a point where i was like it's not that i don't want to talk to you it's just that there's nothing to talk about because nothing's changing about my life it was like so now every week i will have a phone call once a week that last 20 minutes like oh what have you been doing so, work streaming video games <laughs> Had a pizza the other night. It was quite nice. Every now and then we'll mix it up and get a curry. Ooh. Oh. But that's about it. It's very relatable. <laughs> Georgia with the comment. We're okay, no, no, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, bro. Thank you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can relate with the uh, the parent thing and how, you know, they they might call you up or they might message you saying, Oh, how's things going this week? And it's literally the exact same thing that happened last week nothing's changed i haven't yep. done anything different what did i have for dinner probably pizza as well mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it doesn't yeah. change yep it was a period in november where i copied and pasted the exact same message three weeks in a row <laughs> and then my brother saw it in the group chat and it was like stop doing because i've figured it out so they'll bring it out like next week i was like yeah fair, that's fair <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Dalton? Because you still live at home with your mum, don't you? Yeah. I think... Since... Well, my brother was lucky. So he moved out literally about two weeks before lockdown. Mm-hmm. And he got his flat sorted. Like, he had his flat. They're ready for him to move in. Like, a month and a half before lockdown. But he didn't have Wi-Fi for about a month in his, in his flat. So he just didn't go until he got Wi-Fi. Because he was like, there's no point me living there if I can't do anything. Like, I, mm-hmm. if I have to work from home and whatever, I can't. And we're like, yeah, it's fair. And he managed to get him out and he moved out literally like two weeks before lockdown. And like, anyone who's got a brother will know when you live together, it's 
the most painful thing you could ever have because you just argue, you hate each other. Like you go from loving each other and ruin funny conversation to then five minutes later arguing. And I think, think during lockdown, especially and him moving out, I've never been closer with my brother. Like this is the closest I've ever been. Hundred like, percent, same here. Time. Like all the time we're talking, and the same with my dad. It's exactly the same with my dad. I've, I've talked to him before. I talked to him. I don't know once every like three weeks or so over the phone, or I'd see him or whatever. But now I literally speak to him about two times a week on the phone because of the lockdown. So I think it's helped my relationships in that way. As Ellie's saying in the chat, like it's, I think it can go two ways. Really, you either build really good, strong connections with the people that you're kind of stuck with, or it goes the opposite way and you start hating each other, and that is definitely not ideal. When get when yeah. when things get heated, it gets heated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Especially your brothers. <laughs> yep. Todd, how are you doing? Just don't use that word. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see the word, but I imagined it was bad. Yeah, it's not an allowed word, but I will just say that much. Then you just... yeah. yeah. So like I I see my brother what once every two months now. Like never closer. We don't talk often because we don't have that much to talk about. Like he's very much one of those won't play videos kind of kids. Like just really into his like drum and bass and whatever house music. But like before lockdown, you would never have seen us in the same space ever, apart from like the odd night out. But now we're like trying to plan going to like concerts and gigs and stuff together, which never would have seen before this. Yeah. Yeah, I think now with coming out of lockdown and things starting to get better, I think people are really going to make the most of the opportunity of going out to a concert or, you know, going out for dinner or lunch with, with friends just yeah. because you can and now that you know what it feels like like to have those privileges taken away from you uh, i think lots of more people are going to be getting out and about mm-hmm. yeah we're well, yeah, great for the economy and, and great for everything all the businesses trying to get back onto their feet whichever ones are left <laughs> yeah whichever ones are left yeah so i know the deltic are really struggling one of the pub companies that aaron might probably know of Yep. I don't know if you know them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were, mm-hmm. they've got one. They've got a bar and beyond in my town centre, which is even before the second lockdown kicked in. They let go like half the staff because they were just struggling to even stay afloat because they were full on nightclub and they had to try and transition themselves to like a bar and they couldn't redo really it. It was very hard for them. Mm. Hopefully, they're still there because it's one of my favourite places to go. It's a really good place to go. Like the one in Leeds was really nice. Yeah. Like, generally, like, a really nice place to go. Yeah, because the bar and beyond my town centre is an old theatre. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's got, like, the stage bit, and it's, like, if you look up, it's all, you can't go up there, but it's still got all the original seats from, like, the second tier up on the thing, and it's just yeah. turned into this, like, wacky, hippie nightclub. Yeah. That's just an absolute fucking banging night out. So hopefully they stay open, and they manage to get themselves back afloat. Hopefully all the business do. Mm-hmm. Because As we move into the final fifteen minutes ish of the podcast, uh is there anything you're looking forward to once lockdown is over? Beer. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> A nice draft pint. Oh. I think we could all look forward to that, especially yeah. in the, the summer sun outside. Yep. In the beer gardens. Euro twenty twenty one. Oh yeah. Euro. Oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be the World Cup summer all over again, I think. Yeah, it's gonna be so good. I'm I'm waiting for that trippy air free kick again. Oh, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, even though we ended up losing that game, even, yeah, uh, was... amazing. Concerts, from you, trips. Be a Tottenham supporter. He didn't. Oh, he he just moved like the week after. Yeah, but, uh, I know he was oh, still Tottenham player at that point. He was still Tottenham yeah. at that point. Yeah, as Kayla's saying, a, a meet up. You know, we've. But over the past five months, all like kind of growing together and mm-hmm. built up a friendship, it's going to be pretty interesting if we're able to have a meet up. I think cool. us UK lot probably could quite probably easily. going to be quite easy. The others, yeah, the others would be very hard. I mean, to... a, a two two hour flight shouldn't be too bad down to London or something. Oh, 100 yeah, it would be quite easy all... for us. Yeah, like mm. to the side of the pondlands. <laughs> yeah, I'm more thinking about Kayla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Of> the... <laughs> 
eight hour flight, whatever it is. <laughs> oh, what did we say the other day? Big piss up in Mexico. I'm down. Yeah, Mexico. Somehow find our way over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just start off my journey in my town centre and just keep drinking and see if I find myself there. I think that's how I'll do it. No, Dalton, we'll meet each other halfway, which I think is like. Fuck knows what halfway between Birmingham and Manchester and London is. Uh, uh, probably still London, isn't it? Yeah, I was probably, say, like, probably <laughs> no, as well. <laughs> no, because I'm, no, I'm, I'm above London. Mm. Ooh, so it might be Leicestershire? That probably, area? Yeah. yeah. In which case, I know a lot of good places to go out there. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm closer to Manchester than what London is, where I live. So. I think, yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm a doubt myself. I know where I know where about to be on that. I'm excited to play sports. I'm gonna be so unfit when I come out of this, but I'm just so excited. Month. Well, no, this this month, it's this month we can play again. This month, I think. we can technically play again, but a lot of sports aren't starting till later. Uh, no, our football league is getting started straight away. Oh, is it? Cool. They're, they're, they're already planning, like, now. So, so we we got told at the start of the year that our away. football league is cancelled for this year. They're just going to start it next September, or whatever it starts. Which I felt was fair. Like, it was just good planning on their Ours... behalf to not have to think oh, yeah. about anything now. Um, Ours started, but then finished before Christmas, and then I haven't done anything since. And then it's the 29th when we can get together again. Well, the 28th, isn't it, when the Mm -hmm. um, like we can start doing sports again I think we've got a training session already planned for the 29th and that's when we're getting up and going again, my football team Yeah, we're literally going straight into it and the league's already planning games and everything to get the fixture sorted so we can go straight back into it and get as many games done as possible my one worry for when uh, lockdown is over is how my injury is going to hold up because I was a week into my physio when lockdown started it's like I was able to walk on it and stuff, but like running, I've not, I've not attempted running in many a month. Yeah, I'm after strength from my knee. Fitness definitely. is definitely down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, just general fitness is bent. <laughs> I think my general fitness is okay. Mm -hmm. Like I can, I could do a job. I think still. Oh yeah, I reckon just I can do a job. It's just whether my leg will hold up. Yeah. Same. Like my knee and my ankle are both just shafted. Like, did I show you the x-ray of my ankle? I don't think you have. No, it was, it, was, so, it, was, no. it was bad. I'll show you off stream. If I can find the picture. I don't think I have it on this yeah. phone. But, yeah. That was one of the things I'm looking forward to. Is finally getting back into some sort of sports routine. L losing yeah, the weight I've gained. The routine in general is going to be <laughs> really good on everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whether it's you know sports or a job, going back to university and school. Yeah, me yeah. me just meeting yeah. meeting up with my friends. Like I've got my my uh, a holiday thing on planned for July with a bunch of my uni mates from a few years ago now, and we're all so excited because we've not seen each other in at least a year and a half now, most of us. So it's going to be good. It's going to be a complete shit show. Hmm. We're gonna lose to ev me, every sort of deposit on the Airbnb, <laughs> but should be good. <laughs> we got a hot tub, so my plan for the next four months is to get hot tub ready for my body with my hot body. Hot <laughs> get a hot tub, bud. Yeah, hot I mean, do you really need like a, a good body for a hot tub? Oh, yeah. hot tub is the the, the niche area like... between slightly fit and dad bod. And I'm currently yeah. well into that bond. <laughs> <laughs> you got that beer belly going. Yeah. <laughs> beer belly, beer, beer beard. Just everything is just a mess. So got green hair. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's when my high metabolism comes and clutches me up good. Uh. Right, high metabolism is, can be really frustrating sometimes. I like when I'm trying to put on weight because I'm starting to go into the gym and stuff and I want to put on like body mass so that I can actually train and it just doesn't work. I don't put on yep. any muscle, don't put on any fat. Oh, I, because I just mate. Drink a lot of beer. 
It's difficult. I do. That's the thing, and it still doesn't work. Drink more yeah. beer. I I would, but you know, one bottle of Corona costs like ten pounds here in Oslo. Oh, that's true. So it's very <laughs> difficult to do that. Oh yeah. Just get the that imported whiskey. Advantage of. Yeah, one thing I took advantage of when I went back home was the cheap beer. You yeah. know, like literally like two days after I got back, I um I went to the shops and bought like a, a 24 case of Corona or something. And my mom's like, what on earth are you doing? Like, why have you bought this much beer? And I was like, I have not had beer for a whole year. Leave me alone. <laughs> Is it whiskey that's quite fairly priced in Norway? Or... Um... I mean, spirits in general are pretty even with like UK prices, I think. But beer and cider is skyrocketed. Extortionate, yeah. It's not like when you go anywhere else in Europe, though. Only when you go on holiday, the actual like main brands that they get shipped in are just so expensive. Like, it's ridiculous. You're going on holiday to the wrong places, my friend. <laughs> No, it's like if you like if you go to Greece or Cyprus or anything like that, all the actual like branded stuff like you mm -hmm. get over here, like Heineken's and whatever. Maybe not Heineken's, but yeah, uh, like Budweiser's. I know are really expensive. Well. Yeah. yeah, Peroni like really yeah. expensive. Peroni's even expensive here. It's just even more expensive mm -hmm. in other places. Oh, 100 percent. Th the Peroni is the go-to though. The first Peroni place is. I want to go after I'm able to, I, I want to go back to Amsterdam. Because I missed it last year, and it's been like a year long, like hankering to go back to Amsterdam. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> I've never been, so I'm down. It's so oh, yeah. good. I was there. gonna say, I would absolutely be down for a trip to Amsterdam. Like, I've been four times now or something, not addicted <laughs> at all, but it's a good addiction. It's a trip, it's, like, it's something that gets me out of the country. <laughs> okay, we have ads asking if you want tips on how to get bigger. By the way, Ben. Well, I'm. Um, yeah, we're not gonna need any tip I can get, really. We uh, discussed that <laughs> uh, after the podcast. What I would say <laughs> is a shot of apple cider vinegar, soy sauce, and what was the other ingredient? I have no idea. I have no idea what you're about. The shot that Ads had to do. Is, is this his tip? To oh, I big? don't know. I wasn't there, was I? We needed that shot. Oh, you no. weren't, no. Neither of you are. Jeez. Kalis is a trip to Ibiza. Uh, Ibiza is expensive. It is very expensive. Ibiza is yeah. very expensive. If you want a cheap trip, MAGA. Yep. <laughs> Although I. Yeah, but MAGA. Shagaloof. Shagaloof. I, I, I have vouched to never go to Magaloof again. <laughs> <laughs> Napa's good. Na go Napa's places, good. Napa's, Napa's really yeah. good. Um, That's where I went three. I've been there three times. It's awesome at Napa. Just I was also, never old enough to actually drink while I was there. Prague's supposed to be really good. Yeah, Prague too. Ah, uh, and if we can get drunk enough, Disneyland Paris. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather go Orlando, but <laughs> true. But in terms of like money, <laughs> Paris is closer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a, yeah, a lot cheaper. George will finally get a trip to Paris. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Right, well, um, we're coming up to an hour and a half, thirty minutes already. Yes. It's, gone, it's flown by. It's flown. I, mean, like, I can see how we managed to do three hours last time. Oh, Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, what we have said and took in advice from last time is we are going to limit ourselves to an hour and a half. Cause yes. Otherwise, it's a bunch of ramble and. Poor, poor Guy has to listen poor to three. three hours. <laughs> <laughs> poor kid. Uh, yeah, I think um, I think it works works out well. Mm -hmm. And a half. Keep maybe a couple of less topics. Yeah. Um, but it it seemed to have gone well. And uh, we we appreciated mm -hmm. all of your feedback from the first one. If you want to rewatch this podcast or the podcast previous or any clips. We do have a YouTube channel, which I've just put in the, the chat. It's a little bit scuffed at the moment, but it's fine. It's ours. <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, we appreciate a, a like and a comment. Those are two of the things that work nicely mm -hmm. uh, for the algorithm. You know, bump us up a little bit. You get to hear about the, uh, the bike incident and our favourite TV shows as ch children. 
Oh, lots of good highlight clips from uh, from last episode. We are working on getting this onto Spotify as well. We have the recordings. We got a bunch of stuff in the in the in the works. Um, in the works, yeah. It's apparently I mean, a way that, that we can get onto Apple Music, but I don't know how to do that at all. <laughs> I think this week is is a good week that we can sort out Spotify. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Now all of you have no excuse to not listen because you can be doing anything and have Spotify in your ear. Hundred exactly. percent. Um, if anyone yeah, has if any you... suggestions as to what you'd like us to talk about on this show or any special guests you'd like to see. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Kayla, get your ass into gear. Um, Obviously, special guests, we have to, you have to put our level words. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, if you suggest someone like KSI, it ain't happening. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, next week we have the, the fake Stimpy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, what I think I'm going to work on now is some sort of uh, Q&A type link that we Mm -hmm. can post into the YouTube video once we put it up and it means that you can go there at any point um, and add a question in and it's something that we can then bring up in a a later podcast. Yeah. For now, if you do have any comments or anything or questions, just leave it in the comments. We will always go back and we can draft them up before we... We'll uh, we'll be replying to all the comments in the YouTube videos, Mm -hmm. uh, all of your your kind words and maybe negative words, who knows. (laughs) <laughs> no. That is negative words. I'm just gonna dislike. Georgia yeah, apparently gave you know. loads of suggestions, and she expects you to take them all on board. Yeah, she did. <laughs> oh, that was a, that. That was a painful. Yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah, she she did. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours of my life, I never get back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you uh, all for listening. Yeah, thank for you all for listening. And a half to our lovely stories, and um. If you're watching from the YouTube video right now, make sure you hit that lovely big red subscribe button and uh, give the video a like and leave some sort of a comment, and whether you... it's feedback or uh, you know just praise. We mm-hmm. uh, we really appreciate it. We're we're working on bettering the podcast as much as we can. We're only in the second episode, mm-hmm. um, but we're looking looking to take it further. Yes, and if you have any suggestions as to what shit picture we should put in front of Dalton's face, let us know because we'll change it every week. Yeah. 